Shalom, brothers and sisters. All praise to the Most High and His Son for finally coming to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Today is probably the second most holy high day in all of the Most High's holy high days to the point that I had to take off of work today in order to celebrate it. Um, now, as we all know, the most high, most high holy day is the Passover. If you didn't know, you should know that because that's the highest of the highest of holy days, the Passover. You know what I'm saying? And then what follows the Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And I'll say the second most high holy day, according to scripture, according to how you know, the most high words, his words and everything else would have to be the day of atonement. So number one will be the Passover. And the second highest holy day is the day of atonement, which is today. Now, there's a lot of camps that, you know, not every not every camp um, celebrates the high holy days on the same day. You know I'm saying some camps you know, they do it a week before, a week after, like not everybody's on the same page, but there is a ministry that I do follow and that I have been following their high holy day calendar for the last couple of years. Cause it seems like they're the most accurate out of all the other camps, which is GOCC or gathering of Christ church. You know what I'm saying? Because he actually has a team of people specifically assigned to research all the Most High's High Holy Days and uh, match up the Babylonian calendar versus the Most High's calendar and the kind of, you know, um, compare and contrast. Because, you know, Babylon's calendar, which is our calendar, you know, the calendar of December all the way until... What I mean from January all the way till December, so that's twelve full Babylonian calendar um, months. But those twelve calendar months aren't the same as the Most High's High Holy Day Hebrew calendar. So just know that, y'all. Just know that we can't match up Babylon's calendar with the most highest calendar it, it doesn't equate at all but anyway um with that being said um today i took off work so i could celebrate the day of atonement for the most high now we're going to read some scripture that's about the day of atonement and one of the main things about the day of atonement is that the most high basically said the day of atonement is like a sabbath because it's not a Sabbath, but it's like a Sabbath because we're not supposed to do any work. We're not supposed to eat and we're not even supposed to drink on the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is a day to afflict your soul and to fast, to cleanse your soul and to get spiritually more close to the Most High. You know what I'm saying? Because the Day of Atonement was a day that was dedicated to all, like back in biblical times, the priests, the Levitical priests would get prepared the Day of Atonement while all the Israelites would come from all walks of life to come and meet with the Levitical priests that would have, you know, different um, animals like goats to sacrifice, you know what I'm saying, and to shed their blood to alleviate the uncleanness of the children of Israel because of their transgressions and all their sins. But ever since the Son of Man died for us, basically the Son of Man is our sacrifice, you know what I'm saying? So now we don't have to come to, to the Levitical priest with an animal to sacrifice for its blood because the Most High sent His Son who was the sacrificial lamb for all of us. So now we don't have to bring animals because the Most High sent his son who was the sacrificial lamb. You know what I'm saying? It, it all starts to make sense now. And also the son of man is grace. So say for instance that today you had to work today or say for instance, you know, 
Um, people have, you know, medical emergencies where they need nutrition and they need to eat and things of that nature, then they're forgiven. They, they have that grace that the son of man had died for, you know what I'm saying? So that we won't die. We won't die for not keeping the day of atonement because if you didn't keep certain high holy days back in ancient, ancient biblical times, you were basically essentially put to death. You know what I'm saying if it wasn't from the people, then it was a spiritual death. You know what I'm saying? And that was something you didn't want. So let's go ahead and read a prolude before we read the actual Day of Atonement. So the prolude is going to be in Leviticus chapter 16. We're going to read verses 15 through 28 first. And then we're going to read verses 29 through 34, which actually is going to get into what the day of atonement is verse 15 the sin offering for the people then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. So as you can see here between verses 15 and 17, that Aaron and the rest of the Levitical priests would perform, you know, certain holy rituals, you know, such as sprinkling the blood of the bullock upon the mercy seat and then going in the tabernacle and making an atonement in the holy place and make an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And this happened once a year, y'all. Continuing, verse 18, And he shall go out unto the altar that is before I am and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his fingers seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So basically, there was two goats, one that was killed for the sacrifice, and then one that was kept alive. The reason why there was one goat kept alive, aka the scapegoat. Now, I know y'all y'all be hearing certain sayings, like people saying, um, oh, I don't want to be the scapegoat or he's the scapegoat. Most of these sayings actually came out of the Bible, if y'all didn't know that. The scapegoat or the one that escaped, you know what I'm saying? The scapegoat. That's what this is talking about right here. And again, the reason why there was one goat kept alive, aka the scapegoat, was so that Aaron can lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the live goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So basically all the sins of the children of Israel once a year were all put upon one goat. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine all the sins and transgressions of the children of Israel, an innumerable amount of people, all placed upon the head of one goat. <laughs> you imagine how crazy and how demonic and how vicious that goat would turn out once all those spirits are placed upon 
the head of that live goat. No wonder why the Most High said at the end of verse 21, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness because that's the only man that'll be able to handle just a, a possessed unrighteous goat that's going crazy and going buck wild the hand of a, a fit man you know what i'm saying you can't give that goat to a, a elderly man that goat will probably go crazy on him or attack him or something so that's why that's what the whole fit man thing comes in because you gotta have a fit man to be able to tame that wild beast that's full of all those unclean spirits you know what i'm saying to escort it away from the congregation of the house of israel continuing verse 22 and the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness so you see how important it is to let that goat go in the wilderness into a land that's uninhabited because imagine somebody just randomly you know coming into contact with that same goat that's full of all those unclean spirits you know what i'm saying as soon as that random person touches that goat all those unclean spirits could probably hop on that person and basically create a monster of a person so that's why it says in verse 22 and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness continuing verse 23 and Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there and he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people and the fat of the sin offering shall be burnt upon the altar and he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung and he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp so you see how important it was to not bring the that nasty uncleanness back into the camp just like in verse 26 the same man that let go of the scapegoat and he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp so it was very important that that same man that let go of that goat before coming into the camp that he had to wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water because some of those unclean spirits probably attached on to that that fit man that let go of that scapegoat and also back in biblical times when they gave offerings burnt offerings they only took the best of the best of that animal you know what i'm saying like you know the heart um you know just just good organs to be sacrificed you know what i'm saying but everything else was cast forth without the camp just like it says in verse 27 and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make an atonement in the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung and he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp so even the the person that was taking away all the remains of the animal like the the unwanted parts of the animal that threw it away from the camp even him even he had to bathe and wash his clothes in water because there was probably unclean spirits even on the unwanted parts of the animal so it was very important for levitical priests as well as the children of israel coming to the tabernacle to cleanse themselves on that day of atonement everybody had to go through the the holy rituals you know what i'm saying of cleaning themselves before and after changing their clothes like Aaron had to 
um, the fit man that had to wash himself after he let go of the scapegoat. All these things were extremely important. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes of why we're even talking about the Day of Atonement, which is the annual Feast of Atonement. The annual Feast of Atonement, verse 29 through 34. And this shall be a statue forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before I am. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statue forever. And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead shall make an atonement and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary. And he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar. And he shall make an atonement for the priest and for the people of the congregation. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you. Let me repeat verse 34. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you. What does everlasting mean? It means it never ends. So that means even to this day, current children of Israel. Huh? I'm talking to y'all. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as I am commanded Moses. All praise to the power of the son of man, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for giving us this powerful weapon, the day of atonement. This is a weapon, a, a spiritual weapon to be able to cleanse our body, our spirit of all evil and all wicked sins and transgressions that we may have caused throughout the year. This right here is the time to finally wash away all those sins and our transgressions. You know what I'm saying? Because again, the Sabbath, that's a, a weekly cleansing. You know what I'm saying? A, a weekly day where you can cleanse yourself for all the sins and transgressions that you committed throughout the week. You know what I'm saying? But the Day of Atonement is a yearly cleansing. You know what I'm saying? That cleanses you for all the whole year. You know what I'm saying? In, in case you did miss a Sabbath where you didn't, you know, come to the Most High and fast with all sincerity and truth, that the Day of Atonement covers all of that. You know what I'm saying? In addition to the Day of Atonement, the Son of Man dying for all of our sins and forgiving us grace that's what's most important you know what i'm saying is that grace do not take advantage of that grace do not do it you know what i'm saying grace is only for emergency purposes only you know what i'm saying say for instance um your job told you if you didn't go into work today you were fired you know what i'm saying you could not miss today then is when you use the grace of the son of man and pray you have to pray about this y'all you can't just say oh, okay i'm covered by grace no you have to pray and say father i'm sorry that i could not celebrate the day of atonement today um i i, I work at a job in which if i didn't come in today i would have been fired now working on the sabbath is a whole different story y'all you can't work on the sabbath i mean that's just pure point blank period if they want you to work on the sabbath Hey, fire me. So be it. You know what I'm saying? Because the Sabbath is is not to be worked upon. You know what I'm saying? Now, the Day of Atonement is once a year. The Sabbath is every week. So the Day of Atonement, there could be grace for that. The Sabbath, I don't, I don't believe there's grace for you constantly missing Sabbath after Sabbath because you're going into work. Because there's only so much grace that the Son of Man can give. And with that being said, I want to give y'all a bonus, um, two scriptures before I'm out of here. 
Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a high priest that is passed into the heavens, the Son of Man, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. All praise to the power of the Son of Man, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because as it says in verse 15, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Could you imagine that, y'all? Could you imagine all the temptations of sin that we constantly endure every day? That the Son of Man went through those same temptations, yet he was without sin? I mean, that. <laughs> I, I see why when he comes back, he's going to have all power. All power is going to be placed upon him. And all creation will bow down and worship him. Even rocks, y'all. It says in Revelation, paraphrasing that all kind of elements will worship the Son of Man. Elements like mountains, like rocks, like the sea, like the wind will all bow down and praise the Son of Man. You know how much power you got to have to have the elements bow down to you? That is power. You know what I'm saying? And finally, verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The key word in this verse is come boldly unto the throne of grace. You don't want to come to the throne of grace, you know what I'm saying, with nagging thoughts in the back of your head like ah oh, i did do that sin last week ah oh, i did do that transgression a couple days ago nah you want to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need and what time do we have that's not a time of need we need the most high now more than ever and with that being said all praise to the power of the son of man Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father, I am that I am, and for him sending his only begotten son, the son of man, to finally come and save the lost sheep of the house of Israel in these trying times, you know what I'm saying? And again, happy, happy, happy day of atonement to all the practicing Hebrew Israelites, to the Gentiles, you still have time, you still can follow in our footsteps, you know, the righteous Gentiles, so that you can be grafted in but i'm mainly talking to the lost sheep of the house of israel so if you didn't keep it today you can do it next week you know what i'm saying you could dedicate a day where you dedicate a whole day to the most high for his day of atonement take off work do what you got to do to prove to the most high that you're still trying to be in his favor so remember y'all day of atonement no food no drink 24 hours from sundown that you start just like the sabbath from sundown to sundown or from evening to evening no food no drink the only thing that you're going to be doing is getting in that word praying to the most high and asking him to forgive you for all your sins and transgressions for the year past all praise shalom